Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world ignorantly calls God. And Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, those men that are doing this work in sincerity and in truth around the four corners of the earth, present their body as a living sacrifice, believing in the Bible wholeheartedly and sincerely. And uh, much love to the one-third of you believers, of you Israelites out there uh, that are men, women, and children of the household of faith. To you all, I say shalom and greetings, and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. All right, so um, I really only have uh, maybe maybe two precepts and a, a chapter, like a part of a chapter to read. Um, you know, this is just uh, this is just to brothers. You know, fa our families are going through a lot right now. As we're uh, getting up older in age, you know, obviously our parents are as well. You know, we, we're our parents are dealing with, and it, you know, even though they be in the world, you know, we love our, we do love our family, we love our parents. Matter of fact, let me start with that one. Um. And we know they, our parents still have a, uh, a zeal for the Most High. You know, we always pray that Yahweh Hashem Yahushai have mercy upon them. Right. Uh, this is uh, Exodus twenty and twelve. It says, "Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee." All right, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Okay, so we're so we are commanded to honor our our parents, right? And you know, honor goes into like give them respect, reverence. You know, it says uh, Deuteronomy five and sixteen: Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy power hath commanded thee, and that thy days may be prolonged, that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord Yahweh Shai, thy power giveth thee. All right, so you, so it can go well with you. So, being being respectful uh, to your parents is a good and pleasant thing in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, because even Yahweh Shai said, um, "He that who that curses his father or mother, let him die the death." You know, that's what Yahweh Shai was saying. So, because that's something that we've been taught from the very beginning is to give our parents respect, you know, but as we get older and older, you're seeing uh, their strength diminish, okay? And, uh, you know, this this can go into different types of strength. It can go into physical strength, mental strength. Um, you know, and I, I will say I can't wait until the kingdom, man, because seeing your parents not be able to move how they used to, uh, can be disheartening, you know, but, you know, the Lord gives us a spirit to know that everything's ultimately going to be all right. You know, if something bad even happens to them, as far as, uh, the Lord having to take them back to the spirit world, um, you know, at least they'll be in peace. You know, we just pray nothing truly harmful or dreadful happen to them. Even though, you know, if they, they are decent parents, let me say that because I know every brother, don't have decent parents, you know. Some brothers have no parents. Some brothers just have a mother. Some brothers just have a father, you know. But I, I tend to find typically that brothers' parents are decent and respectful, you know. Um, every now and then, you might find somebody's parent, and I'd be like, man, you, you, you know, they'd be like, man, my pops or my mom's is a demon, <laughs> You know, but I still honor them. You know what I mean? Like, every now and then you'll see that. But for the most part, I would say typically speaking, brothers' parents are decent. At least to the brothers they are. I will say that. At least from my experience. All right? And I pray, you Bashim al Shai, have mercy on all you brothers' parents, man, if you, if it's the Lord's will, you know, because they, they're the ones who brought us forth. You know, they're the ones who took care of us, you know, and... You got uh, brothers who may not have known their parents or lived a long time with some of their parents, you know, so we just got to take what goes along with it, you know, what was a part of whatever part of the process is, it was helped to create and form you 
into the man that was necessary for your how about Shamel Shai? Regardless what it be, you know, because sometimes you'll be like, man, why wasn't mom around? Why wasn't dad around? Why, why did not have any parents? Whatever it was, it was a part of the mission to lead you to Yahweh Bashim al So he had to remove certain people from your life or have your parents act a certain way or make certain decisions. All right. But uh, this is Proverbs 1 and 8. It says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Okay, so hear the instruction of thy father. Right. Let me let me actually go back to that. Um, you know, ultimately we know Yahweh Yahweh Bashem Al Shah is our father too, but we got fathers in the flesh, right? It says uh, uh and in the, in the NLT, it says, "My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction." You see, and I, you know, I honestly, I've always been about that. So as far as, you know, just not giving too much information, but just part of my upbringing, I was uh, raised for the first 11 years of my life. Well, let me say this. Maybe the first three years of my life, my grandmother, my grandmother and grandfather were heavily involved. But for the most part, my mother raised me until I was about 11 years old. And then my step, I had a stepfather who came around when I was 12. And um, my birth father left when I was about two years old, you know, and uh, I haven't had much interaction with him, but, you know, I've I maybe spoken to him on a, a handful of times. But, you know, it's all through the spirit, but I still show him respect. You know, I don't disrespect him because of what's going on. You know, you know everything's through the spirit. But um, so typically speaking, when I speak about my father, I'm talking about my stepfather. Because that's the one who I've come to know and learn. You know, uh, my birth father lives in another state. You know, and like I said, it's been less than a handful of times, but I don't want to get into that too much. Uh, but uh, it says in the NLT, verse 9, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Right? It says what you learn from them, this is the NLT, what you learn from them, will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. And man, that's just absolutely true. You know, I was, uh, you know, I was talking to my folks last night, you know, um, and we were talking about some of the things that I've learned over time. And sometimes you kind of forget, you know, with all the things that your parents instill in you, you kind of forget, man. You know, you just innately do them. Like, you know, some things like, you know, washing dishes. If your parents, you know, they were raising you to clean up, wash dishes and clean up after yourself. You innately do it, but not knowing that they, they put that in you at a young age, right? And how much more of the things that you actually learn, like skills. You know, I was talking to my pops about some of the skills and things that I learned. Now, <laughs> I'll say this. I ain't going to get into what it is exactly. But my pops had us doing some illegal stuff when I was younger too, but he didn't know that they helped create positive skills from the outcome of those things right um now he also taught us goodly skills you know like uh just to give one example my pops used to uh we call him a jack of all trades you know because my pops he knows how to uh um he's he's you know he's he's a mechanic and work on a car you know a mechanic he can uh, uh redo a home Right. He, he, he know how to do electricity, you know, maintenance, plumbing. He know how to do all of that, man. You know, he's always been a, a hustler type mentality, you know. But um, we were talking about I was like, man, you know, for years on my resume, I had one of the things that he had us do when he was doing homes. He was getting people doing people homes and he was renovating homes. And I, I named it after his on my resume. I would put. Even though it wasn't an official job, but he was still paying me, but it wasn't, and uh, I wasn't on the books or nothing. But uh, this was like when I was in maybe high school, you know, and I would put uh, uh, his last name, Renovation Services, you know, and when I would put that on there, I would put the different things that he had us doing around the house. And man, we were, we were painting, we were putting in toilets, we were uh, scrapping up tile, old tile off the floor, putting new tile down. You know, uh, doing a lot of different stuff like that, man. You know, and so that's, those are just skills, right? That's that ornament of grace. 
okay? And so the, the things that we learn from them is an ornament of grace, all right? And a chain around your neck, right? When somebody put a chain around your neck, that's symbolizing uh, uh, respect, royalty, you know? Let me see if I can find, uh, because I know this happened with uh, uh, Joseph and uh, with Daniel, right? Which may be the same man in reincarnation. I'm speaking to as a man. Uh, Genesis 41 and 42, if you can receive it. Genesis 41 and 42, it says, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, right? Because he, uh, he, he gave him that sense of respect because Joseph was able to tell him his dreams. And the same thing happened to Daniel. Uh, this is Daniel 5 and 7. It says, The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers, and the king spake unto the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. You see? And Daniel did end up getting that. In verse 29, it says, Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. So that happened to Daniel as well. So... Those um, is a sense of respect, right? So now other people can see your your home training. Other people can see the respect you have for yourselves, the respect that uh, your, your, your mother and your father, your father and your mother, shall I say, have instilled in me, okay? So let me go now to the main one, the main reason why I brought this lesson out. The verse is, uh, the main verse is a little further down starting at uh verse like verse 12 but i just want to read through some of these this is ecclesiasticus 3 i'm gonna start at one it says hear me your father O children and do thereafter that ye may be safe and what does a father want more than anything for his children safety man protection from your how about shmuel shah to look over especially times that he's not there all right it says for the lord hath given the father honor over the children and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons Right. So the father has honor. The scriptures talk about how uh, the children, the children, children's children are going to reverence and honor the, the father. Ultimately, that's why a lot of children love their dad, even though their mom does a whole lot, you know, and all this kind of stuff or dad is not around as much. Children still love their uh, love their father. OK, it says and confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons, because, you know, when it comes to a mother, it's like you 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 have to get that's why a lot of Jake be mama's boys too but you know you have to get a mother to foot to be a woman to have what what makes her to be able to have authority over these men is because she's the mother and the Lord has given her authority over the sons right so if your mother tells you something to do you do it you know uh, especially when you were young but even so more now that doesn't go away you know uh, as long as you you are in the right mind you know, when you were young, my mom used to yell at us to do stuff, and that used to bother me. But, you know, now that I'm a man, I understand. And me and my mother, man, we, me and my, I haven't gotten into, you know, I wouldn't get into out cold arguments, but I haven't gotten into a, a discourse, <laughs> for lack of better terms, with my mother. And, man, I would have to say probably like 15 years, you know, a disagreement in like 15 years. So I'm thankful for that. But... The Lord confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. And my brothers now, as far as raised in my home, I had two brothers. So, you know, a woman raising up three boys, she had to have the authority from the most high. You know, you're now you go in the spot, you do something you ain't supposed to do. Your mom just give you that look and you just know <laughs> to tighten up. You see what I'm saying? That's authority of the mother over the sons. And that's how children are supposed to respect their mother. But now... When we get older, we, you know, you know, my mom's be like, hey, hey, and I, you know, I did have to have a conversation with my mother. And, you know, this is really when it changed. That conversation that we did have, that our last disagreement was because I told my mother years ago, and I think she's held it in her heart since. Um, I told my mother, I said, you know, she used to yell at us all the time. I said, mom, you know, um, Basically, I, I was informing her, employing her to use her femininity. I said, Mom, when you yell at me, 
it makes me not want to do things because she's a woman, you know? So it doesn't come off the same way as a man giving you instruction. So my, your mom say, you know, she don't say you're shy, but you're shy. Take that damn trash out. I'm not going to want to take the trash out. You know, that that's not, you're a woman yelling at me, telling me to do something that I don't want to do. Right. But I, if she would say, Hey baby, um, can you take the trash out for me? I'd be like, yeah, mama, I got you. You know, <laughs> yeah, her femininity, women don't understand their femininity is their superpower. <laughs> okay. You know, a woman yelling at you, being masculine at you, you know, you ain't, you ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> you ain't trying to do what she said, do, you know? And as a child, of course you had to obey it. Right. But now as a man, I still do. But my mother doesn't talk to me that way anymore. You know, she'll say, hey, baby, can you grab this for me? Yeah, mama, I got you. Not a problem. Man. And then I would do it faster, <laughs> you know. And so that's just something mindful to be of for you mothers and you sisters out there. You know, you're, this goes for your husband and your children. You know, I know you want to yell. Well, you know, maybe not the young ones. I know they real young. You got to tighten them up. But as they're getting older, especially like around 11, 12 years old, you got to probably change your tone a little bit. Okay. But it says, um, uh, whoso, whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. So, you know, we always talk about alms, making atonement for sins, converting a sinner, right? Hey, but honoring your father, making atonement. And brothers, our, our sins is deep, right? You know, but Yahweh Hashem Yashar going to forgive us for those, right? But he says, he made, you make an atonement for your sins by just honoring your father. And man, you know, I tell the brothers, we... we I'm trying to get as many of them off in my record as possible. So honoring your father, man, is a great way for the Lord to have mercy on you, right? You know, because the scriptures say in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, they honor uh, uh, the fathers in the flesh, how much more the father of spirits. You reverence father in the flesh. So you're supposed to reverence, uh, give your father uh, honor. And your mother too. It says, and he that honored his mother, right? He that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. Oh man, that's that 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 something like that that fills you with warmth, you know. Honoring your father and your mother, and you laying up treasure, man. All right, man. You know, you people have been through a lot with their folks, man. All right, you know, like the brothers, brothers in Florida. You know, we say it up here too, but brothers for my OG, my old boy. <laughs> Yeah, especially your Wanathon. <laughs> I'm like, Jake, do not want to say father or mother. <laughs> but, you know, they say OG, oh boy. You know, my, my pops call my mom old bird sometimes, you know. <laughs> so it'd be, it'd be terms like that. But you, you honor your mother, you lay up treasure, man. All right, we, we all know we need that. We need a, it says we, we store our treasure in heaven, right? Your treasure is multiplied in heaven, in the heavens when you honor your mother. And even though she has demonic times, you know, sometimes things happen to humble them as well and to change their outlook on life, right? But it says, uh, you know, and this goes for your grandfather and your grandmother as well, all right? It says, whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children, you see? So, and that, this makes complete sense because, you know, basically, uh, whatever man soweth, so shall he also reap. That's ultimately what this is going into. You honor your father, your children are going to honor you. Okay, who? what man that has children doesn't want honor from his children? Now, that's just a lie. If you if you catch any man that says that he don't care about the honor from his children, he's just lying, man. All right? Or he's just a straight bug out. All right? And even bug outs want their children to honor them in some way, shape, or form. It says, and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. You see that? So you're, uh, uh, a father making prayer for children, he's going to be hurt. And even children making a prayer for a father. Right? But it says, he that honoreth his father shall have a long life. And he that... It, now, we know we ready to get up out of here and get beamed up and delivered. But, hey, having a long life or whatever, however long this Babylon go on, you don't want to have a life that's cut short, especially due to disobedience of your father and your mother. That's a terrible way to go out. The Lord, you get up to the heavens and the Lord give you your judgment and tell you why you the reason you got smoked, why you got put down is because you were dishonoring your parents. 
That's a terrible way to go out and a terrible reason, right? You never know. The Lord could take away your election. You know, if they the elect are already elect. I know, brothers. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, like, you don't want that to be the reason to take you out the truth or the Lord to destroy you. It's because you've been disobedient to your parents. It says, and he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. You know? And that's a comfort because your mom, your mom, most of our mothers be in the Christianity and all that kind of stuff, you know, but at the end of the day, it's a comforting thing there to know that you believe in the most high, you know, we, that we are obedient to the Lord, right? Our mothers are, they might not understand, you know, all the time, you know, my mom knows I don't follow typical Christian Christianity. Every now and then she'll ask me a little question, like even yesterday, she said, she know I don't believe in holidays, but she was like, baby, do you, do you uh, say Happy New Year's to people? And I said, no, I don't, Mom. And she was like, okay. But then I was like, I can I can see a countenance on her face, but I was like, but I do say same to you. And she was like, oh, okay. I was like, because although I don't, I'm not in the same spirit as other people, I still, the scriptures say, I, I didn't say the scriptures say, but I said, we have to be peaceable with all people, Mom. And so I was like, uh, you know, that's just the wise thing to do. And she was like, oh, okay, I understand that. And so, you know, and the thing is, is like, you know, and don't don't take this the wrong way. I, you know, clearly we don't want to see our parents wax old. That's why we need the kingdom. So, you know, they don't have to worry about ailments and problems and health problems. But it's like as they get a little older, it's kind of it's it's a little sad, but it's also a little cute because it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like they kind of they're not turning to babies. But, you know, it's almost like, you know, you got to try to care for them in a different way than you would have growing up when they had their full strength, you know? But it says, He that feared the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. So, yeah, right. So just like a master would tell you to do something, you know, a sensei or something like that, you you do it. So the same way your parent, regardless of what it is, even like on, on, on goddamn Friday, when his dad was in there right by the remote, and then he was like, hand me that remote over there. And he, came, he was mad. He was upset that he, he made him come all the way just to hand him the remote. But that's what you do. He did not hand him the remote, even though he didn't want to do it, even though it was vexing because it was right there. But you do it like unto you as your master, right? Um, you know, and this, this, this even goes for, you know, the, the apostles and the elders. The you know, apostles are our spiritual fathers, you know, so when they ask us to do certain things, you know, we do it. Older brothers ask you to do certain things, you do it. You know, that's just what it is, man. Okay. It says, honor thy father and mother both in word and deed that a blessing may come upon thee from them. You know, so don't just do it just because just saying it. You got to do it too. And deed, right? And a blessing from your parents is a good thing, man. What is a, a daughter in her right mind? She wants a blessing from her father to be with another man, correct? You know, so a blessing from them is, is a great thing. It says, for the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, you know, uh, but the curse of the mother rooteth our foundations. Uh, let me get that in the NLT real quick. Um, I mean, uh, GNT. And, you know, this just reminds me, we do have a, uh, you know, I'm not going to put the brother on blast, but it's a, a brother in the camp, you know, and, um, the father has got like a long lineage of uh of men, you know, and children and grandchildren. And you know, it's honestly through the spirit is something to marvel at. You know, uh through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shai. Because um it's a lock, I lost lost that for a second. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shai, because just seeing what can happen through the spirit with a family and what a man can establish through the spirit and will. Of Yahweh by Shema Shai. All right, I'm gonna read verse six and seven again in the NLT. It says, Obey your parents as if you were their slave. That's what it says. You see? In the, in, in the GNT. Obey your parents as if you were their slave, man. All right? So if they tell you something to do, you just gotta do it, no matter what it is. Obviously, if they ain't telling you to uh, go take a life, you know what I'm saying? But if your parents in the right mind, they're not gonna ask you to do something like that. But it says, as their slave. It says, honor your father in everything you do and say so that you may receive his blessing. When parents give their blessing, they give strength to their children's homes. But when they curse their children, they destroy the very foundations. 
Okay? And so it says the curse of the mother root without foundations. So you don't want to destroy something that's supposed to be built up, which is a strong family lineage. All right? Um, all right, I'm going to jump down to verse 12. It says, my son, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. And this is really the point that I wanted to get around to. You know, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. Because as you'll see, you know, the scriptures talk about, it says the glory of an old man is his, his white hair and the glory of a young man is his strength. Right. So when your father gets older, you're supposed to help him to the best of your ability. You know, maybe he can't walk as well as he used to. Maybe he can't stand as well as he used to. I remember my grandfather. Now, my grandfather had some weight on him for sure, but he had problems with his knees and standing up. So what we what he would have to do when he would sit on the couch, we would have to grab. It'll be one or two of us. You know, sometimes when we were younger, it were two of us. And my grandfather's no longer here. He's with the Lord now. But he used to say, one, two, three, toe. And what toe was like, like T-O-W. Like we were towing him like a car gets towed. We were pulling him up out of the chair because he couldn't get up on his own. So he would say toe, right? And so you're supposed to help your father when in his, in his age, man. You know, <laughs> and may the Lord have mercy on our fathers, man, you know, because, you know, uh, they don't move like they used to, right? Running up and down, running around, and you, you see how it changes over the years. But it says, and if his understanding fail, have patience with him and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. Because you, of course, you get to the point when you full strong now. You, your father, he, he, when he was young, he could, he could, he could beat you up. He could throw you down. You know, he had that grown man strength. But now it's to the point where there's like the, the physical roles have reversed. Now they're getting older and they can't, they're not as strong as they used to be. But we're in our full strength, so we're not supposed to despise them. You're not supposed to go down and fight your father or body your father because you're strong now and he's weak. No, you respect him for the man that he is, and and his, even in his mind. It says his understanding fail, have patience with him. So that means even if his mind goes, or even if he doesn't understand some things, even if he has Alzheimer's or uh, dementia, you know, you're supposed to have patience with him, all right? So this goes for physical and mental. It says, For the relieving, relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten, and instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. And uh, um, I got, uh, I think, two, three more scriptures. All right? It says, uh, and for verse 15 is probably my favorite. It says, verse 15, In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Thy sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair, warm weather. Ooh-wee. Yeah, your sins are going to melt away like ice in the fair, warm weather for looking after your father and your mother when they receive old age, man. Okay? That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. If y'all don't, don't for, you know, I know my Florida brothers and don't, don't always understand, but, hey, you can Google it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't ever seen it in real life. But uh, you seen ice, and then the spring comes around, fair, warm weather. Like when that that first change between when it's winter time and it's icicles outside, and you start seeing uh, the icicles melt away, man, it's, it is a wonderful sight. You know, it just start melting and dripping. You know, and then next, you you it'll be out one day, and then you come out the next day, the icicles are gone. You know, it says fair, warm weather. That's how it's gonna make your sins are going to melt away for reverence of your parents. All right? It says, He that forsaketh his mother, excuse me, he that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer. And he that angereth his mother is cursed of the Most High Yahweh. So you don't forsake your father, all right? And don't anger your mother. Because, honestly, it's not hard to uh, to uh, not anger your mother, man. You know, she act my, you get you get to the point where, you know, now, like I said, everybody's relationship is different. You know what I mean? But you still can respectfully tell your parents what's going on in your life, what you can do and what you can't do, right? 
It says, uh, my son, go with thy business and meekness, so thou shalt so shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord, right? So that's what we want, man, to find favor in the eyes of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And we start doing that by his keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, believing in Yahweh Shai, believing in his son, you know, and uh, doing right by our parents, our fellow brothers, you know, and just doing it to the best of our ability. So I'm going to wrap it up with that. I pray, Lord willing, this lesson was at a fine Honor your father and your mother, man. You know, and the Lord going it's gonna be a crown of life. You know, and the Lord's gonna bless you. So hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashab, Yahweh Shai Bahashab, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.